What's going on everybody, Donnie here with a real life NHL video. I figured I'd talk about one of the more wild situations that hockey's seen over the last few years, specifically pertaining to 22 year old Swedish forward William Nylander. As most of you know, Nylander has been a restricted free agent for a while and is currently unsigned when this video is made, searching for a long term deal rather than a bridge deal. Remember, Nylander has to be signed by December 1st. What does this mean for his future? Let's talk about the potential options. Number 1. Nylander's Ability Now, analyzing his ability, a fair market value for Nylander is really really hard to come up with, considering in all the factors that are involved. One of the most important ones is the progression path that he's on. In his first full season in the 2016-2017 season, he had 11 goals, 10 primary assists, and 10 secondary assists in 1,050 minutes of ice time at 5v5. In the 2017-2018 season, he had 80 more minutes played, but he ended up tallying 12 goals, 21 primary assists, and 12 secondary assists, which was a huge step up, doubling his primary assist total and showing he's got incredible value at 5v5. At 5v5, Nylander ranked 25th in the entire league and even strength assists per 60 minutes of ice time, finding himself above guys like Evgeny Kuznetsov of the Washington Capitals, Evgeny Malkin of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Jakub Voracek of the Philadelphia Flyers. That's pretty impressive in itself, showing that he can help a team really succeed at even strength as well as on the power play where he's a known commodity because of the aforementioned passing skill, plus a great shot. While Nylander played with Austin Matthews, there's no real doubt in anybody's mind that he can't be efficient otherwise. Nylander still found success without Matthews, providing a ton of offense with guys like Mitch Marner, Patrick Marlowe, Matt Martin, and Dominic Moore to name a few. Nylander had much less power play time last year than in 2016-2017, but still managed to have 13 points on the power play, 12 of which were either goals or primary assists. Nylander's ability is top notch, and he can help any team on any line as soon as he steps into the lineup. So on to potential trading partners. This is where it gets super dicey. Finding a potential trade partner with just two weeks until a decision has to be made is extremely important for both the Leafs and Nylander. Nylander wants to play hockey and the Leafs would love to hold onto him, but it seems less and less likely with the Leafs going out on the open market and asking for teams to send in their best offers. There's not many teams out there who can make a trade like this work out that easily at this point. That being said, Pierre Lebrun reported recently that up to a third of the league has asked about Nylander as is, so what could a potential deal look like? The one team I've seen pop up more than any other team in the league at this point is the Carolina Hurricanes, for good reason. The Leafs defense is shaky at best, and the Hurricanes have extremely talented and young pieces to work with, along with a projected $15.6 million in cap space. I've seen both Brett Pesci and Justin Falk rumored, with Pesci being 24 on a 6 year $4 million deal, and Falk being 26 with a 2 year $4.8 million deal. Both of these guys are super talented, and while I don't personally think either are on the level of Nylander in terms of value, as I said before, finding value with a deadline bearing down at you might not be super easy. A few other teams that could be looking quite hard at Nylander in my eyes, the New Jersey Devils, Colorado Avalanche, New York Rangers, or New York Islanders would all make sense. The Devils don't have a ton of value in the organization to move for Nylander and I see them being a premier long shot unless they're willing to move a big package involving Ty Smith. The Avalanche on the other hand have exactly what you expect the Leafs would want with a ton of young talented ELC players on the roster and in the minor leagues. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't do anything, but with guys like Yost, Timmins, Gerard, and others in their system, it might be tempting for the Avalanche to go all in to add another scoring forward to the Avalanche top 6. Now, the New York teams are both interesting situations with a ton of potential in my eyes as well. The Rangers are in a retool slash rebuild mode right now and have a lot of talent as well, including some forwards on great deals that could hop right in and make a difference. Seems like Brady Shea or Kevin Hayes would be one of the major pieces in a deal for Nylander. Pertaining to the Islanders, they have less tradable youth talent but could potentially open up and offer someone like Nick Letty along with one of their expiring forwards with value such as Jordan Eberle, Brock Nelson, or Honors Lee to potentially get it done. At this point, the value might not be there, but the Leafs front office may feel pressure to make some sort of move with Nylander and may have to settle for less than bargained for. While that may not be exactly the value they're looking for, it might end up being pretty decent for the Leafs considering they might lose out Nylander for an entire year if they don't make a move. I'd say one of those teams could definitely scoop him up. Number 3. Considering Nylander's upside Now, theoretically speaking, if you're the Leafs, you should 100% pay Nylander. There are very movable contracts on the Leaf roster that could open up the cap space needed to make a move or two, with guys like Patrick Marlowe at 6.25 million for two years, and now some Kadri at 4.5 million for four years, both easily replaceable in my eyes. The Leafs could be looking at about $40 million next year to lock up Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Gardner, and Kapanen, which could easily be done with some leftover money to pay small contract guys. The cap crunch in the NHL is likely going to hit them at some point, so why not start now and take advantage of potentially studly ELC talent on the way in Timothy Liljegren, Rasmus Sandin, Carl Grundstrom, and others who are set to be NHL players on an every night basis coming up pretty soon. One interesting thing to consider is what Nylander is actually attempting to get. A few comparables in the NHL would be Pasternak 6.6 .6 million until 2023, McKinnon 6.3 million until 2023, and Barkov's 5.9 million until 2022. 
My expectation would be that Nylander would get somewhere in the ballpark of $6.5 to $7 million on a long-term deal, and you have to wonder if the Leafs are anywhere close in their offer at this point. I'm a big believer that Nylander is going to end up as a 70-point player at some point in his prime, which would absolutely make him worth every penny in that sense. Consider that, also, he'd be the Leafs' third or fourth best forward behind Tavares, Matthews, and potentially Marner where he'd likely be the second or first on at least 20 other hockey teams in the NHL. Consider that also he'd be the Leafs' third or fourth best forward behind Tavares, Matthews, and potentially Marner where he'd likely be the second or first best on at least 20 other hockey teams in the NHL. If you ever have the chance to put that kind of talent together in an NHL that has scoring trending up higher than any season since 2005-2006, you have to think that as the cap goes up, you'll find your way out of these struggles eventually and won't tie yourself up that significantly. If you move him, you have to pay the player you trade him for anyway, so this is a decision between keeping a potential superstar scoring forward or trading him for defensive help in my eyes. All in all, the Nylander saga will be ending soon regardless of if he gets a deal or not. Chances are, we'll see more news rush out as American Thanksgiving goes by, so keep your eyes peeled and make sure you're refreshing Twitter so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching this little breakdown video, subscribe to my channel and like the video if you're at all interested in seeing more, and I'll talk to you all later.